<laughs> it's a music group. I'm Kindred. Please. <laughs> Please be seen. So, like, like I said, like I said, the first question is, no, I'm just repeating the same question. Uh, the first question is, how, what will you say to a woman who is stuck, and I will ask him to, or a man who is stuck in a sexless marriage? Um, two, three years, and there is no sexual intimacy. Do you advise them to stay, or do you advise them to walk? Is this my gun? Okay, sir. So I'll submit to you, sir. As the head of our home, sir. <laughs> Perfect. You can't want me this one. Um, okay. I think, first of all, I think that. Uh, first of all, thank you, Pastor Larry, for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, I think that the problem is not really, that's not the real problem. Um, because not having sex is just an offshoot of the real issues. So if we're asking them to break the marriage just on the fact that they don't have sex, that would be um, bad counsel. So we need to sit down and find out what the real issues are. Are they friends? Are we having a great relationship just talking but we're not sexually attracted to each other? If we're not sexually attracted to each other, has it always been? Um, did it just start? Was it after kids? Are there kids? Um, is it that things have just gone cold? So if it's that things have gone cold and they're still friends, but it's just that there's no, either no time or um, we just don't feel amorous towards each other. Yeah, that happens. There, there are cases two, three, yeah. Cases we're dealing with like two, three, yes. So it depends, you know, maybe children. If you've had a baby, usually a woman knows that your life is shut down for at least a minimum of two years because the child is hanging on to you for two years. So um, she may easily forget that the man needs her as well. In fact, at some point that almost happened. Not, not that it, not sexually. It just almost happened that I was paying a lot of attention to my son uh, when I had my last baby. He was always with us, always, you know. And boys are different from girls. Girls don't, boys eat more than girls. So he was constant. And I do, you know, exclusive. So at some point, my husband just came on and said, today this boy is moving to the next I room. I drive him. <laughs> Move, my friend. When you marry a woman, you can be sucking yes. forever. <laughs> Not here. My friend, move. Your time, your rent is over. And you the honest truth was, I didn't notice. You know, I didn't notice that I was giving him so much attention. Because, I mean, he's a boy, so he would constantly be between us. He was family planning. So I was not really thinking about that. Yes, if we wanted to have sex, of course, yes, I would send him away. But for a few minutes, before you know he's back. My husband said, mm, I know as I pay for this wife. This boy cannot come out. He won't marry only go and do anyhow. So I had to... So him telling me made me more conscious. So I had to have him start sleeping with someone in the next room then maybe in the middle of the night I express those kind of things but I now started paying more attention I was now conscious but that's because we're still our friendship was still at a very good level so we could talk you know we're talking he would tease me about it sometimes that ah this one this boy don't come you don't get boyfriend now you know things like that it's, I, it started dropping so like I said I don't think it's just the sex are they still friends then if it is just that oh we're friends but there's just no time then we have to consciously make time Intimacy doesn't just happen. It's something that you have to work out. You have to be intentional about intimacy. It's not just going to happen. Um, the way you felt about each other the first year might not be the way you feel about each other three, de three years down the line. It will definitely not be the way you feel about each other when they're kids. You'll be tired. If you have young children, you'll be very tired all the time. You're doing homework, you're answering questions. And if you married a man who is not hands-on, you're going to do it all alone. So, of course, in the night, you want to sleep. Then they now come and put hand on your back and say, honey, hon, I won't sleep. I bet no vest. You know, so I think, so I think that is something that they have to be intentional about. So like I said, there are a lot of other questions we need to ask to be able to really answer this question. But of course, Pastor K has the spirit of God at deeper level. So maybe there are things he knows that. Um, was it a woman that asked the question? Yes, yes. He was just trying to, but I think it was a woman that asked the question. Okay. Um, Interestingly, it's not an uncommon case at all, at all. Um, but really, like my wife said, um, 
to give a good answer, we need more uh, information. Uh, has it always been like that? There are cases we've dealt with where it has always been like that. So there's no bringing back to where we used to be. There was nothing we used to be. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Uh -huh. There are some cases where, oh, we had a great sex life, then it has waned. So what we're now trying to do in this case is bring them back to what was exciting them then that needs to excite them now. Do you understand? But if there's nothing to bring us back to, we never existed, then that's a new, that's a problem that has been long existing. So it's either the guy has generally low libido. There are some people that have incredibly low libido. So that might need some medical assistance in terms of getting his libido back up. All right, there are drugs for that and there are experts on that. So we need to get his libido back. Now, if it's that libido was good, but now he feels she has added weight. Or, she, yeah, I mean, sorry, he feels she has added weight. Or, you know, for some reason, he's not just attracted. Then we need to go into what do you term attraction? What is going on in that man's life? Is he watching porn? Is he focusing on something else? Because the way life works, and this is why all the things in the Bible, they are not laws for God. They are laws to protect us. When, when, when God says, don't watch pornography, it's not because God wants, doesn't want you to have crews. It's because that watching pornography also damages some other aspects of your life that you can't change. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So if you're watching pornography, what that means is that you will start to lose attraction for your spouse. Because you are gaining, your, your attraction is one. If you're focusing it on these models that, don't, that are not real, you can't focus the same attraction on your wife that is real, that has given birth to four children. Her body is not going to be like this woman, so these women have not given birth, or at least they are cosmetic. Somebody getting what I'm saying? So there are many things we will look at. Is he involving, some man is not having sex, is he not having sex anywhere at all? Because some men, this is why the men are not having sex at home. Because they're having sex somewhere. So there are many, too many factors that yeah. we need to look at. And do, do they even have a marriage outside of this sex? There was somebody I cancelled. I do virtual counseling globally. So there are people that uh, book sessions to ca do counseling. There was somebody that ca got cancer from abroad. She says she has been married for a short time, one or two years. And um, the husband doesn't want to have sex with her. She like, We're talking so much about sex. Meanwhile, in the other conversation with the counseling, she was mentioning that the man has gay tendencies. The man also is cheating. Many other things. And I said, you seem to be more concerned about him having yeah. sex with you. What you need to be concerned about is these other things going on. Is things going on that is affecting the sex? Sex is not a problem. You are concerned about. So I was trying to get that. So is it that if he has sex with you, he can go ahead with these other things? Because I could see that they didn't have a marriage. They were not talking. They were not working together. The man was not bringing money home. He was uh, making contact with other girls. He was even making contact with guys and uh, male dating apps. So I said, you have a bigger problem. Him sleeping with you is not a problem. Smallest. It's the smallest part of the problem. So most of them were focused on the symptoms, not on the sickness. Fever is symptom. There's something causing the fever. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. If we treat the fever, it will come back again because the real thing causing it is there. So if there's no marriage, in some cases there's no marriage. There's what they, it's not sex. They don't have marriage. But if they have a marriage, and the issue is that the guy is not just sexual. Oh, that is good or build on whatever is costing it, because there's a marriage. There's some cases where there's no marriage. They are not talking. They are not working together. They do no, nothing is going on. No marriage. Sex is not our problem. No marriage. So if it's no marriage, if it's a serious case of no marriage, in those kind of cases, there are, there are very few times people have no choice but to live in marriage. It's not something we encourage. It's not something we pray for. But the truth is that there are times when that's your option. It might be tough, but the honest truth is that I can't tell somebody to stay permanently in something that is sinking. You know, at the end of the day, it might affect the person's... You know, see, people commit suicide, people kill, some, and some people, the children they even raise because they stayed in something they shouldn't have stayed in. Those ones now also go out Damage. and wreck havoc again because those children too are not well, you know, they are also affected by that. So, it takes more details, Sha. That's what we're saying. To get to the crux... Of the matter. I hope that was helpful a bit. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My, my, my second question, uh, and you know, I'm just remembering all the other questions yeah. that people have been asking over time, so um, is I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like her. Why is the church 
still asking us to remain married. This is not love now. This is, I don't even like you. Talk less of to love you. Mm. Because of where I'm at now. Why can't church just accept that when people get to this point, they are free to walk away? No, that, that's not what I'm, I'm looking at. It's interesting. I was just thinking, is it really easier to like a person or to love them? I think it's easier to love a person than to like them. I would, that, that's what was playing in my head, really, because I, I, I don't necessarily have to like you to be patient with you or to be kind to you or to ignore all the evil things you do to me. I don't necessarily have to like you. I think liking someone is the hard part. Because liking you means I want to be with you. I want to be around you. I want to spend time with you. I want to be a part of your life. I want to be sure that everything is okay with you. Um, so, usually when people have gotten to that stage, like we've said from the very beginning, it's an intimacy issue. I don't know why it seems to always come back there. Um, most people do marriage. And by doing marriage, what I mean is, they've, they have this picture of two people get married, we have children, we raise them. I'll come and say, have you paid rent? Because rent is almost due. They say, you, have you cooked? Uh, okay, I'll give me money, chop money. Let me go and buy ingredients. Then you give me, I'll say, it's not enough. Then, you know, fees. school fees. You know, we don't have a relationship. We don't have a proper relationship. We don't hang out. We don't have things we like together. We don't have things, we don't spend time together. We don't communicate. We don't gist. Like, what makes a marriage really worth it? And what makes um, two people want to be together? is that intimacy that they've built over time. Now, if there's real intimacy, even if someone offends you, it's kind of easier to get over it. With intimacy, you can overcome anything. You can overcome infidelity. And I know this because I'm an infidelity recovery coach. I've seen people who have, the husband has cheated on with many girls. Many. Or the wife has cheated many times. And the guy, because this is my friend, I'm weighing what we have over what, what this person has done. And as far as the person is willing to work at changing, they've submitted themselves to the process of recovery and all the many things they're expected to do. I, I think I can stay. And then I can make it work. As opposed to someone who their husband cheated on them, I'm, and I'm not belittling anyone's pain, whether one or half or emotional, it still, it still has the same effect. They walk away. You hear a lot of, like you say, I can't. You know, and Afonet they say they talk that rubbish. I can't. I can't. So I think the real problem, most times, <laughs> the real problem most times, uh, I'm trying not to get into my message this evening, but the problem most times is that lack of intimacy. And it is usually sometimes from the beginning. If you check, how did that marriage start? Maybe somebody introduced them. Maybe it's just friendship. And I know that there are a lot of things that people can do to destroy a good person. I know people who I genuinely like my husband, but he has been doing these things and he's not willing to change. I know that that can deteriorate. But I think that if we try to maintain intimacy in marriage, that friendship, there are things that your friends have done to you that you let go of. But when somebody is not your friend, and you know, maybe when we say friend, people don't really get that. Maybe because a lot of people don't do friendship well too. Because friendship, if somebody is really your friend, worst case, when they finish annoying you, you say, man or just talk, just come and eat. You will get over it quickly. But when somebody's not your friend, anything they do will pain you more than normal. Your friend can tell you, say, see your head. And you, you will say, your head will go. You know, you will take it. But if somebody who's not your friend tells you something that is not even as bad, they say, see your head. You say, my head. Why would they say, see my head? Is there something about my head? Did someone talk about my head? What did they hear about me? You will start thinking what they didn't say because there's no you know, there's no relationship. So if you're not a voice in someone's life, it's hard for people to accept things from you. So in this case, because I don't go, Sokoto, come back to Joss, now we're going to Plateau, Potako, ahem. In this case, um, we need to find out what has happened, where they were from the beginning. Like all these cases, they're really counseling issues. And counseling is not just what I'll tell you here. They're sessions. This person probably needs at least a minimum of six to 12 sessions for us to hear What's really going on? What's, when people tell you things, it's not really what they're telling you. There's always so much more on that. So when you get the details, what has this person done? Why do you think it's so hard for you to accept? Did you like him before? 
and John yeah. like him now. Yeah, exactly. Or you never liked him from day one. Exactly. Or this person did this, and you are thinking, this is what my dad did to my mom, and I yes. vowed that when my mother was going through this, I will never take this from anybody. So you are fighting for your, on behalf of your mother. It's not even your marriage. That you're it's not your husband. It's your mother's fight. You are fighting your father on her behalf. So there's so much. And so I'm really wary of just giving random counsel here and say, you know what? Just walk stay away. Or, or you know what? Just watch a few mo movies together. Just tell each other sorry and move on. And that's what they do a lot in the body of Christ. And I think... Just tell yourself sorry. Yes. And I think and that it's a welcome. major problem. Yes. You have couples who are... Who should not... They're toxic. They shouldn't be in the same room. Talkers of the same marriage. And they say, just tell each other sorry. Oh, yeah, Christ good. forgive you. Forgive one another. Yeah. The same way you do me... I don't do Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So... So we need to get to that point where so we need to get to that point where we actually really start to face the facts now let's talk people get people in a room talking you will see the things that will come out beyond all the this is what it is okay we're done with what he did what what is the real issue no but of course next yeah. level sir no <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, Pastor Lai, I, I and Pastor Lai were discussing it yesterday um, about our counseling training school we want to set up because, to be honest, Pastor Larry, some of the worst advice I've uh, had to readdress came from pastors. Yeah. Just tell people, tell yourself sorry and go back home. It doesn't work like that. Some cases can, you can solve some cases like that, but the cases that have reached you, like to your table, usually, it's not that kind of case. You have to go to the roots. What's the problem? Where did this start? How long has this problem been? You know, not just say yourself, sorry. I've seen many pastors trying to push cases where, and sadly, there are times I've, I've cancelled when I've had to tell them to go their separate ways. You know, it's not something I like to do, but there are some times that if I see otherwise, I'll be lying. If I tell them to go back home together, I'll be telling them lies. Because I know that this is just a disaster waiting Somebody to happen. Will die. Somebody's going to die there. Somebody will die. Yeah. Usually Somebody's ends not going like to make it. Yeah. So. You know, and there are times where people have been stringed along emotionally. You know, we, we had a case we had to close. We had to have a meeting with both families and end the marriage in my office. The guy would just disappear. <laughs> the prayer warrior disappeared. Yeah. We joined all the prayer platforms online, but he will neglect his wife. Then, when he needs something, come after back. six months, he'll come back, collect money from her, and disappear again. have sex with her a few times. Make her make some ambiguous spending here and there and disappear again. And I knew he was going to be doing this for the rest of his life and keep that girl, young girl, hanging. I said, Look, you're young. You can quickly correct this mistake and say, end this thing. Okay, you can't be going back and forth like this. It was just a joker. It was just a joker. Trying to use her. And these same people, when we were trying to get them to do counseling before marriage, the guy was the one saying, he doesn't need counseling. He can't wait. He wants to marry. And he already made plans that like, we didn't agree to wedding. We're going to wait on that He was going to marry by force. Now, we, <laughs> the story is long. I don't want to go But the point is that there are cases where we have to sit down and know that this problem, eh, to, to, uh, to pretend that, tell yourself sorry, and go back home, is going to solve it. It's not. All right. There are cases where we've seen sexless marriages from the beginning. Not that, yeah. not that uh, we're having, it has been sexless from day one. And it's now three years. And Just the problem is clear. You know, many, many, I don't want to give too much details yeah. of people's cases, but yeah. you know, the point is that there are many cases, Sha, that when you sit down and <laughs> look at the indices, you know that uh, you know, the only way God, God can work in any case, but the people really must be ready. If, if they are not ready, you know, there's nothing anybody can do. And one person shouldn't be suffering eternally. Okay? We, don't, we don't usually get to break up or separate quickly. But there are times we eventually get there. And there's what is called normal separation and controlled separation. separation. All right? So controlled separation is where we are all still mindful of this marriage. And we are still working on this. Separation is for us for to go and time. walk. Yes, for a time and for us to go and walk on ourselves. It's not that we are just separating for separating sake and we can cruise with other people. No. So there's normal separation, there's controlled separation. There are many, many things, Shabbat. With supervision. The, yes, well. with supervision. So the point is that in most of these cases, it will need a sit down and some investigation as to why we are here. You know, why don't why don't you like this guy again? Is it something? He, did you like him before? Oh. And he did something. If it's that kind of case, then we can retrace the steps. Yes.
get you to forgive, get you to let go, get you to heal, and you find that you can love them. Your emotions, like I told you today, your emotions are in your control. They are not the one controlling you. Yes. Just like we, we human beings sometimes we like to submit to our emotions. But the Bible says he, he, that has, he that has no control or rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. So sometimes human we want to submit to our emotions. But that's not how God intended. God wants us to control our emotions. So you can be there now, but with healing and good uh, therapy, you can get to the stage where you like that man again and even love that man again. Thank you. Thank you. Please put your hand together for them as they take their seats. Hmm. This evening, eh, 